Hello, Captains. This is Kent again, and welcome to the Flight Show. So, this is, like, really exciting. I'm uh, doing a flight, a test flight, from San Antonio, Texas, to Dulles Airport. And what we're going to do, as you can see in the lower right corner of the screen, I have a uh, superimposed the camera for my new purchase of the Honeycomb Flight Yoke. And so you'll be able to kind of get a, a, a view of how the flight yoke handles as we're flying a 737-900 series aircraft. Um, you know, it's one thing to just kind of look at the flight yoke while you're flying or look at the plane and you don't have the benefit of seeing the yoke. I mean, you can see the effects of your controls on the screen, but what having the yoke superimposed on the screen is you get to see a correlation as to the inputs on the control and how it correlates to the response of the aircraft for those inputs that you uh, have on the control. So I was really uh, excited to do this because as one of my previous uh, videos had mentioned, um, this Honeycomb Flight Yoke is a game changer because there hasn't really been the release of a serious flight yoke at the affordable end of the flight simming experience in probably over 12 years. I mean, there is Yoko the Yoke, but that Yoko the Yoke is over $1,000. And um, they now have a newer version, and that's, I think, $1,200. And, you know, the average flight simmer or even a flight enthusiast may not have that kind of money liquid to be able to buy those sort of things, especially if they're married with children, much less depending on what their career uh, or their jobs are. That's just, that's a lot of money. But your average user needed to have something in a price range between, you know, 150 200 or so dollars, which makes this, this flight yoke um, much more affordable to the masses. And it's a quality yoke. Um, I've had an opportunity to mess with it for a couple of days now, far from the amount of time that I really wanted to, but it's great. And so, anyway, let me get back to this. We're about to take off from uh, San Antonio. So, as you see, we're now uh, set our uh, takeoff thrust, and I have my hands on the control. Obviously, we stay in the center of the center line uh, with our rudder pedals, but soon we'll, be, uh, we'll get to V1. And we've just passed V1 and V2, so we're not going to pull back on it. I have uh, my instruments below the screen, so I'm able to kind of keep an eye on, uh, you know, where my plane is going using the flight director. But you can see, it did not take a whole lot of control input in order to, uh, you know, have the aircraft respond. Now you see I let the uh, yoke back a little to lower the nose to stay on the flight director. And then you're going to see, uh, I'm going to put in an input here, and we're going to make a uh, li little bit of a left turn, uh, because we're going to be going uh, from a north to uh, easterly direction. And as you can see, the flight yoke just has a really good feel to it. And uh, it doesn't take much for correction in order to make the turn. Now, remember, I'm looking uh, at the flight yoke from this camera angle, so I'm turning to the right, which looks like I'm doing the opposite of the wing, but yeah, that's all right. You were doing a right-hand turn, and we're climbing, you know, we're, uh, we're climbing out of the airspace, and it's, it just feels really, really good. Um, there's a great resistance, but there's not a hard center, and with there not being a hard center, you don't kind of have this, like, popping out of a level flight. It just smoothly transitions through the center. Um, and the same with the, the back pressure and the forward pressure. It just really is a different experience to fly the aircraft uh, using this yoke. Um, now, there are buttons on here that allow you to adjust the trim. And you have to kind of get the assignments though, so how you're going to fly it. But I have to really say, the one unfortunate thing about letting my first test run be a airliner rather than a general aviation is that you know once you get to transition 
you know, you're going to put on the autopilot and you're not really going to use the flight yoke. So I really think that if you're going to really get your money out of this yoke, um, you got to do some general aviation flying where you're trimming your aircraft to keep level flight and flying your navs. But I was just so excited. I thought, okay, I got to use this on a, on a, on a higher end uh, PMDG aircraft. And as I said, uh, climbing out, climbing out of the airport, it was just beautiful. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stay on control uh, without turning on the autopilot until we at least get past transition uh, 10,000 feet. Um, uh, the, you know, at the at the 10,000 foot level, and uh, just you know, just get a feel for controlling it. And as you can see. I am having fun with this aircraft, uh, particularly because of using the uh, Honeycomb flight system. So I haven't seen uh, any videos posted as of yet that let you see the flight control superimposed uh, against the control, the, the video of the control of the uh, aircraft with the yoke. So hopefully um, this will uh, keep be it'll be keen interest of some of the YouTubers. Uh, video, not YouTubers rather, but the, the, the well, hope the YouTubers too. Now that I think about it, but you know the people who want to watch the video to kind of research whether this is something that they really uh, want to invest in. Um, I hope this is um, providing some content that uh, you will find interesting, if not uh, beneficial. But I can honestly tell you, I am going. I mean, considering that I've used the Satek flight yoke for over ten years. I anticipate getting thousands of flight hours of enjoyment out of using the Honeycode system. And um, not to sound like a groupie, but I really want to thank uh, those at Honeycomb for having the inspiration and the dedication to designing and producing this flight yoke. The flight sim world needed it. I am sorry, as quality and input as Yoko the Yoke is, um, not everybody has a thousand dollars to invest in a flight yoke. It's just a reality. There needed to be something at the affordable end of the spectrum so that kids all the way up to adults and, you know, novices to flight enthusiasts could have a yoke to give them a quality flight experience at an affordable price. And this yoke is that. And who's to say if someone else is going to try to make a competitor, a competing yoke? But I think those at Honeycomb uh, realized the potential of cornering a market because there just really wasn't any alternatives out there. And they didn't just throw you something to say, here, you will take this and you will like it. No, they took their time and they really made a quality product. So, hey, no offense to Yoko the Yoke and those that uh, enjoy it. If you've got the resources to do that, more power to you. Do what you do. Um, but as you can see, this was uh, a joy to fly, and I'm looking forward to hours with it. So now we're going to go to the landing. Okay, we're back here, and we're on our approach to uh, KIA, KIAD, or Dulles. And what we are finding is that, uh, well, one, it's a beautiful approach. It's a hazy day out, but uh, it's a really big airport. And uh, I've got, it was off in the distance a second ago. <coughs> Hold on, let me see if I can... No, you can't. <coughs> Oops, sorry. I'm all over the place. <coughs> well, you're going to see me land at it in just a moment. But what we're finding is everything's going smoothly. So when we get on the final, I will disengage the autopilot, and you'll get to see basically the aircraft, how it responds as I uh, apply controls to our flight yoke here. So, I'm kind of excited about this. This is my first video doing it. <coughs> We're a little uh, above the proper altitude. Uh, I had to adjust, uh, you know, I had to adjust the altimeter. And once I did, um, the terms were a little high. Uh, but we'll get it down in just a second. We're, uh, we got our drag out so that we can have a little bit more of a steep descent. And uh, we'll get on the, uh, <coughs> the proper uh, descent rate. And uh, we'll show it to you in just a second. So I'll bring you back when we are on our final. <coughs> okay, so the localizer is alive. So it's also active. So let's go ahead and arm the localizer. 
and we're tracking that. The um, <coughs> glide slope is also alive, and it's about to go active. At, it is, and so we will go ahead very quickly. All right, so our speeds are all set. We can lower our landing gear. Give it a notch of flaps. Okay, it froze up for just a second, but it's okay now. Alright, we'll be arming the approach. Alright, the approach is now armed. We will go ahead and bring us down to our V-Ref. And we'll bring down our flaps. So I think for the sake of this uh, video, it'd be a good time to go ahead and take, the air take control of the aircraft. So and I haven't assigned this button yet, but I need to. Okay, my aircraft. And I'm going to do my best to stay aligned on the glide slope and the localizer. My auto throttle should be kicking in, so that's fine. Yeah, I hear it. And um, unlike, <coughs> unlike the uh, Satek yoke, this requires a lot less force to adjust because it has a very, very um, open center point, so it's not like it snaps into place. You kind of just glide through it, which makes for much smoother control. I really enjoy that. And so it's making the landing quite the dream. Very gentle, very gentle uh, controls. Very subtle, very gentle. The aircraft responds very nicely. I seem to be a little bit over uh, to the left, but I can bring it back. In fact, that should be come. Ah, there, there it comes. Now I'm trying to reduce, use a minimal amount of rudder, just so that you can see the you know, uh, lining up, for those of you who may not have rudder pedals, how easily you can um, control the aircraft on your final. A little bit low, so let me, a little back stick, back pressure rather. Oh yeah, this is very nice. I can tell you definitively, uh, Click the default jetways button. I didn't even know there was a button for that, but I will definitely do it. Um, I I have to say definitively, I much more enjoy landing an aircraft on this flight yoke than the Satek. And true to form, there is a plane ready to get on the runway when I'm landing if I don't use ATC. Bastards. All right. Anyway, we'll just ignore them. All right. We're gonna disarm the auto throttle. And he's not there. Gentle touchdown. Reversers. Sorry, I uh, think I bumped. Okay. Ending reversers, manual braking. We're going to use this uh, speed exit taxiway. Okay, well, there you have it. <coughs> we have accomplished a couple of things. One, you now see what it's like to fly a uh, liner on this yoke. Nice, easy to control, 
Very nice. Slow it down here. Uh, you get to see a nice landing into um, Flight Beam's uh, Dulles, which I really like. And thirdly, I have now completed a run of uh, destinations in my pilot's life and get to start a whole new batch of them. I'm actually thinking of changing from United to Delta to get a new set of places to fly to, but uh, we'll see. I applied, still waiting, but I did get an offer from Qantas. Sweet! And a raise, if I choose to take it. I'll have to look. <coughs> so much to consider. Alright, so... What we're going to do here is just, uh, <coughs> we're going to ask ATC where to, where to park ground, parking, taxi gates, let's see where they tell me to go. I turned off the sound for that, so don't mind. <coughs> Alright, bring the flaps up. Gate Alpha 21. Okay, I see where that is. And we will acknowledge. Best way to get to Alpha 21 is this way. So we can turn that off, and then we will ask GSX 921. That's small, though. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to 22. Don't tell anybody. With logo, of course. Because if it's small, I don't know if uh, GSX will work, so... Oh, yes, yeah, so let's go ahead. Start the APU. And taxi lights. Excellent. Sorry, you didn't need to see all of me belly. Not my belly. <coughs> Alright, we should be the spot after Etihad right there. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Should be coming up. Here it is. I even see the marshaller from here. Excellent. Getting here just before dark. Excellent. Bringing me in. Bringing me in. Didn't mean to do that. Put on brakes. <coughs> and we can start the APU. 
and cut engines. <coughs> Bring the gates. <coughs> uh, let's see. Jetways. We'll do the tree. Which one's coming? Uh, I think I should have chose the other one. Oh well, we'll let it ride. Oh, I didn't bring down my... Uh, there we go. Okay, and we'll say deboarding. Well, I hope you little liked the little uh, display of the flight yoke as it pertains to flying uh, a liner. I want to do one also for flying a general aviation aircraft. Uh, there we go. And now our craft, our passengers can uh, disembark. So, uh, lovely. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this uh, gave you an idea of what it's like to use this flight yoke. I love it. Um, what I want this over Yoko the Yoke. Consider Yoko the Yoke is like $1,000, and this was um, a little under 250 Love this yoke. I have no regrets having it. It's a game changer. And just so that you know, if you looked at my video that I put up on my uh, channel, I called this a game changer long before a lot of other people jumped on the bandwagon. I'm just saying. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy the channel. I hope you enjoy the video. And I look forward to seeing you in the virtual skies. Don't forget to like and subscribe.